They have made her an omnipresent goddess that can hear the confessions of over one billion Catholic sinners and take their sins away. When Catholics pray to Mary, they are praying to a female demon. When they bow down and pray to this demon statue, they are breaking everything in God's book. They are breaking every rule. They are breaking every law. They have taken Luke one twenty eight and blaspheming it. You see, a demonic spirit's favourite pastime is making a person feel religious. Look at Matthew fifteen eight to nine. Catholic paintings of Mary portray her as a strong, mighty woman and as Jesus as a healthy, wimpy little baby. Now, the Catholics will tell you that they don't worship Mary. They'll tell you that they don't, but that is just more deceit and more lies. They declare that Mary is co-equal with Jesus and that she is the mother of God. But you've got to understand that the Mary the Catholic Church worship is not the Mary of the Bible. She is the ancient goddess mother, Ceramius, with her child Tamaz. In Chinese mythology, she is known as Shinagamu. She is always pictured with a child in her arms, with rays around her head. The ancient Germans knew her as Hertna, with baby in arms. The Scandinavians called her Dissa, who also had baby in arms. The Druids, the most evil of all people, worshipped the same demon god called Virgo, Parachula. If you go to India, she is known as Indari. In Greek mythology, she is known as Aphrodite. To the pagans in Rome and to this day, she is known as Mary. She also is known as Venus, goddess of love. She has been around for years and years and years, church. They worship her and they will deny that they ever worship her, but that is a lie. In Judges 2, 3, she pops up well before Mary was ever born. Why? Because she is not Mary, the earthly mother of Jesus. In Jeremiah 44, 17 to 19, God's servant is seen rebuking Israel for worshipping her. They ignored him. They took no notice of him. And they brought down destruction upon themselves, as will all Catholics that ignore this warning in this book. In Ephesus, the mother was known as Diana. She had a tower-shaped crown that represented the Tower of Babel. In Egypt, the predecessor to the Catholic worship of Mary, she was known as Isis, the mother of the baby Horus. These demon female gods worshipped since time began till they were all placed under one name by the Roman Catholic Church by the previous Roman Empire. She was a favourite person to worship in pagan Rome and when pagan Rome married into the church under Constantine in uh, 300 AD, all the demon gods came with them and they were all rolled into one, under one name, Mary the Immaculate Church. Church, I have a proposition for you today. I want you to take a proposition to the Catholic friends that you have and ask them, ask them these questions. If someone threw your candles in the garbage and burned your rosary and dumped your holy water out and killed your priest and then they burned your cathedral and threw your fermented liquor in the sink and took your Westcott and Hort RSV Bible and threw it in the furnace. And if they took your mass and threw it in the ocean, where would your religion be? Where would it be? Stop and think about it. All your idols and all your candles and all your beads and priests and coats and cardinals and Bibles and mass were gone. What would you have left? Now don't duck and, and, and shimmy around the question. Let me ask you something. What would you have left? Suppose someone took the cup permanently that you took your, your mass from and took away the host, the bread you eat. What would you have left? You believe that the liquor in the cup and the bread is Jesus Christ. Suppose someone calls that fermented liquor down the sink, pours it down the sink, throws the bread out the window and shoots the priest. Tell me something. What have you got left? You know what would be left? Absolutely nothing. You'd have no superstition to hold on to. You'd have no lies to hold on to. Let me tell you what you would have. 
you'd have nothing but a poor godless symbol and a leadership that has gone to hell so fast that they're going to slide into hell like a greased pig on ball barons. But listen to me, listen to me if you burn my hymn book. I've got the songs memorised in my heart. I have a song in my heart that is burning, calling upon the Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. And if you burn my Bible, then it won't faze me, because I've got it written on my heart and hidden in my soul, that I might not sin against him that saved me. You can't kill my priest, church, because he's in heaven. If you burnt down my church building, I would worship God's spirit in truth and in spirit on the beach, on the street corner, on top of the mountains, or in my backyard. You can't burn my candles because I have none to burn. You can't destroy my rosary because I'm not interested in one. You can't break my images because I've already broken them. I don't have any and I don't want any. And if I had any, I'd hang them upside down on my dashboard. You can't, can't. You certainly can't take my cardinals because I can't have any. You can't kill my pope because to me a pope is just another wicked, wine-guzzling, whiskey-drinking, debaucherous, child molest person going to hell you can't take any of this away from me you can't take away my little Jesus statues and you can't take away my little Mary statues because I'm not ignorant and you're not going to take advantage of me and you can't steal my religion from me because my saviour is living in me the only way to stop me exposing you is to kill me which is exactly what the Roman Catholics have done to Bible believing Christians for over a thousand years and will start doing it again as soon as the tribulations happen and they start taking over you see someone can steal your religion because your religion is made of lies and demons and sinners it's made out of handle uh, candles and money and murder, murder and a lot of superstition. Your father will never be my father. Your the father will never be my father because my father is in heaven with his son at the right at his right side. Unlike you. He is who he claims he is. You see, he is the Rose of Sharon. He is the bright morning star. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the first and the last. He is the father of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. He is the one that raised Jesus from the dead and he is the one that is coming again soon. Now you can keep believing your false idols. You can keep drinking your wine, believing it's the blood of Jesus. You can keep sitting before the part of the, the the priest each week who claims to call down Jesus from heaven every time he has mass. But it's not going to happen. There is one Jesus. There is only one leader to us, and that is Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Catholic Church, it's time to stop putting your trust in man. It's time to stop putting your trust in church. There is only one that you can trust, and he is the Lord Jesus Christ. And he's waiting for you. He's waiting for you to ditch Mary, to ditch the candles, to ditch the rosaries, to ditch all the other superstition that, that, that these priests and these popes have brought into you. And it's time to recognize that Jesus Christ is the Lord of Lords. 